Good evening. Thank you for choosing to spend your evening here in Coke Arena, although there is not a volleyball match and there's not a basketball game. In celebration of Black History Month, the Wichita State Athletic Diversity and Inclusion Council has sponsored this student athlete panel. Thank you to our former student athletes for coming out here to share some of their advice, their knowledge, and experiences with us all. My name is Kristen Dow. I am an academic coordinator in the athletic department, and I will be moderating tonight's event. Our first panelist to the far right is Dr. Eric Sexton. He started his journey here in 1982 as a student athlete on the men's golf team. He graduated in 1987 with his bachelor's of business administration and management. After time in the private sector, he returned to WSU to work and earned his Master of Public Administration. Dr. Sexton earned his PhD in Political Science from KU in 2002. In 2008, Dr. Sexton was named Athletic Director for Wichita State, a role he held for eight years. <laughs> DePaul Brewer. DePaul joined the Shocker track and field team in 2004. He quickly made an impact helping the men's team win the 2004 Outdoor NBC Team Championship. In 2007, the fall was the NBC Discus Champion. He ended his career with three marks on the track and field all-time top 10 list and 50 conference points. The fall graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts in Criminal Justice in 2008. Angela Butler. A native of Wichita, Angela Butler decided to keep her talents here in the city. She joined the women's basketball team in 2000 and was named NBC Freshman of the Year for the 2000-2001 season. She went on to be a three-time all-conference selection and to set school records for rebounds, 1,297, and double-doubles, 67. Her double-double record is also an NBC record. In 2010, Angela was conducted in the Pizza Hut Shocker Sports Hall of Fame. She holds two degrees from WSU, a Bachelor of Arts in Communication, and a Master of Science in Education with a Sport Administration emphasis. Okay, so we're gonna start off with what I hope is an easy question. What is your favorite, most fun, Shocker student athlete memory? This one's for everyone. Oh, thank you. I, I decided no mic. I don't really like to public speak, and so I don't want to be even louder than I already am. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Man, you're making me feel old. Oh, my God. Um, so I, I was thinking about this. I, I have tons of memories playing here, uh, but one of my highlights would be when I was a freshman and we played against Missouri State and Jackie Stiles. Anybody knows one of the best women basketball players ever. Um, we had a sold out arena and for us it was it was just a highlight i mean it was amazing i mean i think we ended up uh losing by two but it was still it was i mean to get to say i got to play against her and had an awesome game was one of my biggest highlights um i would say my favorite shocker memory was um as you mentioned in 2004 we won um, the Missouri Valley in uh, track and field. Um, it was special because we had a small team at that time. I don't know what the track size of the team is now, but then I think, I mean, both could allude to it that, you know, maybe we had 20, 25 male athletes. I don't know. Um, but as a freshman, you know, I was recruited to come help, you know, win the Valley. Um, and so to me, it was just, okay, I had this pressure of, you know, I need to live up to my points that I was expected to get. Um, so me coming through and, you know, be able to place in a couple of events. And then at the end of the day, you know, it's track, track athletes here is those road trips back, you know, on the bus. They, they're long, you know, especially somewhere from like at the time, I think Northern Iowa or some place like that, you know, it's an eight hour, 10 hour bus ride. And, you know, no one wants to run, you know, ride all the way back with the losing attitude, you know. So it, it was awesome to win and just the memories and, and things we shared and talks I still remember to this day, and just some of the you know relationships I built with that team. 
Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I look back and I have two sets of memories and I'll be talking about those as we go through the evening. But as a student athlete, my greatest memory was, and again, they talked about the, the or my colleagues talked about this, it's the relationships. Mine was Fairmount Towers. You guys, did anybody, does anybody here remember Fairmount Towers? Fairmount Towers and the, the roommates I had and the other student at, students as well as regular students as well as the student athletes that I lived with, played with, and we fought on the battlefield together and did lots of neat things. And those fr friendships still exist today. And uh, they are so meaningful. Uh, it's amazing how far away we've been in the, with those experiences, but it takes an email or a phone call to hear about somebody who is having a health issue or somebody who's having a child. And all of a sudden it's like, the years melt away. So it, it was those, that's, that's what I remember the most, uh, let alone all the competitions and all the other things, but that's the thing that I most cherish as a former student athlete. I think I heard of Fairmont Towers, that was the dorms that were across the street, right? Yep. So I have some student athletes who complain about walking all the way to study hall now, and that's about a two-minute walk from dorm room to study hall. Yeah. So, starting at Dr. Sexton's first year at Wichita State in 1982 to now, that's been 40 years. So, reflecting on your times as a student athlete and observing the environment now, what are some of the biggest changes you have seen? Well, there's too many to mention, but uh, the one I'll focus on is that the sport that I played and I was, was proud to be a part of was the golf team. And the biggest change for the biggest change that I see is, is that we drove to almost every event. In fact, we had a tournament in we had tournaments in Mexico. We drove from here in a uh, van slash uh, suburban, pulling a trailer all the way through the across the border to to Monterrey, Mexico, to play in a golf tournament. Um, I kind of make light of that, but that's, to me, that was a, a significant difference. The other piece is, is that uh, the, again, I look at Kristen here as an academic coordinator. We had academic coordinators to a certain extent when I was here, but to be honest, I worked for the, I was a student athlete here, and for some reason they also made me in charge of the inmates uh, in that I was a tutor for one of the, for many of the sport teams. I worked for the men's basketball program specifically, and I helped support their uh, academic um, uh, study halls, as well as I ran them, as well as tutored for them. And I look at all the support system now, and we did that in a side room, as opposed to having a study hall and all of those kinds of things. So those are the two things that I, again, much improved, the ability to focus on the student athlete experience and uh, again, the things that I experienced. Well, I would say for me is kind of the facilities as well. Um, me being a thrower, I think when I first started, our thrower's room was located underneath the stadium um, and it was just a tarp. We'll put up a big black tarp and we just threw our implements into those tarps. And when I see the facilities now where you know, we can go over to, was that Heskett Center? For track practice, I mean, I would have dreamed to have that opportunity. Um, just, dang, if I could just have that facility, um, how much better I would be, but who knows, I'll probably throw the same. But um, just that type of stuff and, and having access to uh, the technology. I think I did a tour of the study hall and the you know, Apple Compute IMAX and all that access is just right there. You're, you know, you, you're throwing and you want to see what you did wrong, pull up your cell phone and, and that's a lot different versus, you know, my coach had to have a VHS and, hey, once I can be able to load this up, you can come by my office tomorrow and we can look at it. I mean, just that type of stuff is just, just awesome to see. And I think study hall, when I first got here, was located way where the golf course used to be. And so that was a march. It's not even a golf course. It's not even a golf course anymore. I have to echo everything they said. Um, one of the biggest things are the locker rooms, all the fun stuff in the locker rooms now. 
um, the technology and the study hall rooms. Um, the fitness center is amazing. Not that we had under the stairs, that's the stadium fitness center, but um, all the other equipment that you guys have now, um, along with not having to do all the bus trips. I think you guys fly a lot of places, at least for women's basketball, um, compared to the long Northern Iowa trips on the bus. So, so. Okay, this next question is for Dr. Sexton. You have a unique perspective of having been both a student athlete and also an administrator. What were some of the challenges you had or observed as a student athlete that shaped your administrative side? First, I don't really accept the premise of your question. Okay. From the perspective of, I didn't see those, the things that one might consider a challenge, they weren't really challenges. That was just what the experience was. It wasn't a challenge, it was not uh, awful kinds of things and all of that. Um, the, the, I have to check my notes because I'm old, but one of the things that we tried to do, and I see a lot of, uh, former teammates here that made me, and I want to thank them all, the staff here that you have here, many of them made me look way better than I ever deserved. But the, but the fact of the matter is our focus was to focus on providing a first class student athlete experience. And that was because, not because of any experience that I had that made it that I wasn't having that, but I understand the value of that from my previous experience as a student athlete. And we tried to focus on how do we give each one of our coaches and each one of our sport programs and all of our support staff the tools to, to make them successful such that they can make every one of you who are student athletes successful. And we focused on, that's to me, that's if there was a learning from my student athlete experience, because I knew how much people focused on trying to make a great experience for me. And I wanted to be able to pay that forward and give that back as, as an administrator. And I had a great group of built people in this building. I look up there and see them who bought into that and believed it. And they've always believed that. And they still believe that today. So their focus is about how do we have a first class student athlete experience uh, across the board such that again, do we, do we make mistakes? Do we stumble? Do we stub our toes? Yes, because we're human and we're fallible, but we are all trying to do this the right way to make for a great experience for all of our coaches and all of our staff. And that's the biggest thing. If I, if I, I've said that a couple of times, but I come back to, that's what I learned from my experience as a student athlete is to focus on those things that are important. Yeah, that's a very good answer. This next question is for you, Angela. As a student athlete, you experience a lot of athletic success. A lot of athletes find it difficult to maintain athletic success due to this external and internal pressures. What was that kind of your secret to maintain that level of success? Um, I had an amazing support system of my teammates, my family, my friends, um, my athletic advisor, Gretchen. Um, I would spend many hours in her office just. Um, we would slash calendar days down. Let's get past this day to get to this next thing. And basically um, surrounding myself with like-minded people, people that had drive, people that had passion, people that wanted to succeed. succeed. Um, a lot of my good teammates or I mean, a lot of my good friends were volleyball players. So I surrounded myself with other athletes as well. I didn't just stay within my circle of my teammates. I tried to branch out and surround myself with other people that had goals to strive for greatness. You make a really good point. I think that it's very important to kind of step out of the athletic bubble. It's so easy. You're doing, you're training with your teammates, you know, you're with them all the time, you live with them probably, but to step out of that and make friends with people on campus, different athletic teams, that's a good point. Okay, so Paul, you were an out of state student athlete Trackfield team from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. What was the experience like transitioning to a new state away from your family? And kind of what helped make what you all feel like home? Oh, still here. So. I would say I love to be away from home. You know, it, was, <laughs> it was one of those situations where I just couldn't wait to get away. So my experience is a little bit different. Some people say they're homesick, but 
I mean, I love my family. I love to go back home, but I, for some reason, I love being in Wichita. Uh, did help that my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife now, we met in college you know, my freshman year, so I kind of had some motivation to stay here um, during the breaks. Um, but the transition, I would say, I mean, Wichita and Oklahoma City is kind of similar, but different. Um, you know, I also believe like the the athletes that were recruited to Wichita State, they were like, I would say like-minded, but just, we all vibed. I never had a group of, you know, ah, I can't stand those guys. I hate the basketball team or I hate the baseball. You know, it just seemed like everyone that was here, kind of like, you know, you said with the coaches, you know, like-minded people just seemed like they recruited those same type of athletes. So I never had you know, feeling of it being hostile. I just didn't like it being here. So that made the transition easier. Um, and I would just say, I mean, and I'm still here today just because, you know, the opportunities and uh, that were presented to me after college and just kind of felt like home, so I, that's why I stayed here. I love that. Okay, so it, this next question is for everybody. In recent years, mental health awareness has increased. Each semester, the American Conference hosts a powerful mind to help decrease the stigma. What are some of the routines you found during college and after college that help support your mental health? I'll go. Yeah. Does I look like? No. Um, it's really, really important today to, uh, to I, I, I call it self-care. And that um, the one thing that I tried to focus on, again, I didn't, we didn't think of it in the context that you think of it today, but it's really about how do you control the things that you can control? Because there are so many things that are coming upon you as student athletes and as professionals in the athletic department today that um, we have to focus on the things that we can control. Because if we focus on the things we can't control, all of a sudden the world begins to spin out of, spin away from us and it's hard to manage those, those kind of feelings. And you, you do begin to feel this aloneness. You do begin to feel this separate, your separateness. But if you, and again, it sounds really simple and it's not as simple as what I just said. I understand that. But this notion of how do we control and focus on the things that we can control? And, and then the other piece is, Everything, these large problems that, that we run into that require us to think about our, our mental health and all of those things all look like, and, all you, and again, I may say things that make people uncomfortable and I apologize for that. But sometimes when we have difficult conversations, we have to talk about things that are difficult. But sometimes these ideas look as big as elephants. But I had a parents that, and friends that taught me, how do we, how do we, eat an elephant one bite at a time so those that's what i looked at when when those mental things and those issues came up of those challenges of how do i kind of think about control the things i can tr control and try to take it one bite at a time um i would say uh, I mean, even today I would just advise everyone to, you know, get a hobby, get something that you enjoy doing that's not your main focus. And so like in, in college, student athlete focuses sports, you know, like, you know, it's sports, sports, sports. Hey, I might think about getting a job one day, but, you know, it's sports. And sometimes when those things are not are not going well or performing, you're not performing like you think you should, I, that can get difficult because, you know, it, no one wants to be told you're not good because most people, you know, they're at this level, D1, most likely you guys were the man or, or girl at your, or at your high school and everyone always told you how good you were and then everyone's going to find this period where they're not doing good as they thought you know and so um, that can you know be a down moment but when i was at school we had a guy i don't know if he still works dr b mr yeah, dr b yeah and it was helpful to have someone like that around because you know it could be anything you go to him you know talk about hey i'm not i'm not performing like i think i should He'll just go, so what do you like doing outside sports? I'm like, I'm here to talk to you while I'm not throwing far, you know? And so <laughs> the thing he just told me was, you need to think kind of like a mini retirement. You know, you need to have once in a while. It's just 
retire, do something for a week, and come back, and you remember, you know, you might love it still. Yeah. But, you know, that's what I kind of say. And then today, it's, it's kind of that saying, you know, if I'm feeling like pressure, I'm feeling down, well, I'll go fishing or I'll cook or, you know, something to just forget about it for a little bit. You know, because if you're always thinking about it, most likely it's going to weigh on you and you might not even know it. So that's. He stole mine because I was going to say Dr. B. We used <laughs> Dr. to talk B. to B, Dr. B about everything. Um, and then it, for me, it goes back to my support system, uh, my friends, my family, um, Gretchen. Uh, um, I had some really good uh, allies within the administration here. Um, I also had some awesome teachers that I could go talk to and confide in. Um, also, like he said, hobby. Um, me and some of my teammates, when we would go get stressed out, we'd go bowl, we'd go to the movies, we'd go do different things that we didn't have to think about sports or what we're gonna have to do the next day in practice if we lost, because it does become overwhelming um, and it really can get to you. So I think um, having other avenues um, and then spiritual too. Um, I got into church um, and uh, that helped a lot. So now we have um, Dr. Bree, she's our mental health coordinator, so we have someone like that for the athletes. But I really love all your points, definitely about hobby. I think it's so easy as a student athlete to get your identity wrapped up, or really as a professional, you get really committed to what you're doing, and you think of yourself as, you know, like, I'm an academic coordinator, this is what I do, I'm here, but these people, if something goes, goes wrong, you kind of feel that in your spirit. So if you have some other things that you interested in and putting time in those buckets and really stuff makes it. Okay, so here's some more questions kind of specifically about the black student athlete experience at Wichita State. So each of you were at Wichita State during different years. What was your experience as a black student and athlete during your time? Um, my time was good. I got taught from an early age that people are always gonna have eyes on you, not just because you're a um, student athlete, because you're a black student athlete. Um, so you've gotta do better, you've gotta be better. Um, but overall, I had a, I had a good experience. Um, I never felt um, out of place. Um, I had friends, and that's what's so unique about Wichita State. There are so many ethnicities here. Um, especially living in the dorms or in uh, Weed Shocker when we had that, I mean, you're surrounded by diversity. Um, I know people say outside of which, or outside of WSU, it isn't as diverse, but here on campus, it is beyond diverse. And I felt at home with a lot of the student athletes and a lot of other students. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that as well. I mean, my experience was, I mean, I didn't have any situations where I felt like I was out of place or uh, discriminated against, or just, you know, just felt at, at home. Kind of like I said earlier was, Everyone just seemed to be recruited by the same person. So it, it was cool for me. And, you know, that's all I can do. And I echo the experiences that they had, but I will add a little bit of flavor to some of the, because of uh, um, just, and again, I had great experiences, I had great friends. The thing that I learned, and I learned it from an early age because I had a great support system and family and all these things, and all this is that not not everyone from a particular ethnic, ethnicity who treated me with disrespect was bad. I'll let that sink in for a second. Be sometimes people are just bad and they just treated you poorly because they treated you poorly. It wasn't because of anything. And that was one thing I learned because the diversity of Wichita State. Now, the one thing that I did, the, an experience that I didn't expect uh, coming here was something that you might not, you'd be surprised at, but I was told by fellow African-American student athletes that I wasn't black enough. And, and I could not really wrap my brain around that until they go, well, you don't speak the way we think you should speak. You don't act the way we think you should act. And I was not getting that from folks that didn't look like me. I was getting that from folks who looked like me. And again, they weren't being 
bad or anything. That was their experience. And, but I wanted to share that with everyone here in that that did not indict anybody. That was just their experience. And so sometimes we just have to take people that that's their experience and help them learn from that, that guess what? Because I grew up in Halstead, Kansas, of which I was the only African-American in the community. I sound the way I sound. I act the way I act. I don't act this way or that way. And so when you run into folks, that act a particular way or act a particular or not a, act a particular way. Try not to ascri ascribe some label to it other than that's just who they are. Yes, I think that was really good. There's so many nuances within the black community. You know, there's colorism and there's you know, thinking that people should behave a certain way. And a lot of times we need to respect that people's perspective is their reality. So their perspective of what a black person was like was a, a certain box that you didn't fit into. And so that's really why we need to take people on an individual level. And if I follow up, the other thing that was disconcerting at first about that is because when those those of us who are of color wake up every morning, we look in the mirror, we can see that we are different. We see that. So when somebody says, you're not like us, well, I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror and I go, I look this way. So how could I not be, how could I be so much different? Well, because I'm different because I had a different life experience. That doesn't make it less valuable or more valuable. It makes it different. That's what's great about which that was what's great. We all talked about it. That was what's great about Wichita State is that we did have this culture of diversity that was open to those kinds of things. Does that mean we're perfect? No. Does that mean that there are not people who act in ways that we don't like them to? Of course. But Try not to ascribe that to an entire group that uh, it's what my dad taught me one time. And some of the staff have heard me say this is that you treat everybody the same till they tear their pants. And what that means is you treat everybody the same till they misbehave. And then when they misbehave, now I know who you are. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean that everybody's that way. That means you're that way. I think uh, I want to ask a follow-up question is, what do you think were some of the things that really helped contribute to the culture of acceptance and diversity during your time here at Wichita? Well, I'll go. Um, I think part of it was because Wichita State, we may not be always great on the follow-up, but Wichita State historically, because I'll be the old historian, was always great on the first. For example, my father uh, was one of the first African-American football players in what would have been the Missouri, Missouri Valley Conference. His number was retired the day after he graduated, which is unheard of. He had the career and he, tr he played, and I'll tell a little story about him in a second. But so he was the first. Uh, when we still had football, Coach Willie Jeffries. Coach Willie Jeffries was one of the first, was, was the first Division I African-American football coach in America, right here at your institution, Wichita State University. Before that, there are people's banners who are hanging on the wall here who were important players. And my dad would tell a story, and I don't, I sound like an old dude, but uh, would tell a story is that on this very court, there was a time when the coach in the mid 50s, they put three African-Americans on the court at the same time. And there was the arena of the African-Americans was a buzz because that just didn't happen. That happened here. I would ascribe part of it. It's built into our DNA that, that uh, we move past those things, at least initially. Um, so. Okay, so kind of 
Oh. <laughs> Hard to follow that up. <laughs> okay, so, Dr. Sexton. Uh oh. Your father, Lincoln Sexton, as you mentioned, was here on the Wichita State football team from 1944 to 1948. And for reference for everyone in the audience, Brown versus Board of Education, which established racial segregation in public schools, is unconstitutional, was decided in 1954. So, well, you heard me earlier talk about the fact that you learned that there are lots of folks that don't look like you, that care about you and, and believe in your experience. And that was one thing my dad had when he played football for Wichita State. I'm going to tell hopefully two quick stories, and then I'll tell one that's a parallel about myself. Um, there are numerous times where my, my father, who again, was long before uh, civil, civil rights really kicked in, uh, they would travel as a team and they had to ride on the train to games. And they rode on, and they had to ride in, as a team, they rode in the Jim Crow cars. How many of you have heard of a the Jim Crow cars. That those were the cars on the trains that were reserved for the African Americans or blacks. Well, the whole team would ride together on the Jim Crow car. Uh, they didn't make my dad ride separate. They rode together. So that, so he, he felt that even back when in the late forties, but I'll tell a quick story. Uh, on the concourse here, there's a uh, football that is signed by my father's football team. And the story is the $2,000 football. Um, the team had a football game in West Texas, in Canyon, Texas. And at that time, uh, it was not safe for my father to travel with the team. So he did. if you can imagine this, the team had a game and my father, who was one of the stars, could not go and play because it was not safe for him to travel. So he stayed home. Well, the team lost by, again, Darren will remind me, but I think they lost by a touchdown or they, it was a very close game. But literally at the end of the game, my dad's best friend, white player, runs out to the field, court, the field, picks up the football, runs back to get on the bus. He runs back to the bus, the fans are shaking the bus because they knew what was going on. So they picked up the football, had it in the bus. The fans are shaking the bus. The bus drives back to Wichita, Kansas. And at the time, the administrators will get this, Reggie will get this, that back then you uh, shared the, the uh, receipts from the attendance of that game, of a game when you went on the road. And West Texas called Wichita State and said, we aren't sending you your portion of the attendance until you give us back that football. Well, the rest is history, as you know, because the football's up here and the university gave up their $2,000, which was their portion of the attendance. The institution made that decision to, to, keep, to keep the football. The whole team signed it and presented it to my father. So there's that experience, and that was in the late 40s. Now, fast forward to 1984. 1984 was when I was a student athlete here. And uh, I hope I'm not going too long, but 1984, I was a student athlete here, and we were invited to play in a golf tournament uh, in Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, the coaches back, the golf coaches understand this. Golf coaches talk and say, hey, we're going to have this tournament. We'd love for you to come, but Eric can't come and play. And my coach was a little naive at the time. Great guy, but he was a little naive and didn't go, well, Eric's not that good. What are you talking about? Well, they happened to be playing at a golf course that didn't allow, in 1984, didn't allow blacks to play on that golf course. So there was a little bit of issue. Instantly, our athletic director called and we, we went through some things and we didn't go to that tournament. 
In fact, he called University of Kansas and other schools, they came home. So I tell those two stories is that, and again, goes back to what I, why I care about this institution so much, is this institution made decisions not in its best interest, but in my best interest and my father's best interest and our family's best interest, and overall the institution's best interest because they did the right thing. And so that's why I come and do these things. That's why I care about this place so much is because it cared about our family in ways that you just can't even imagine. So I leave you with, and th those are two things that both happened to the both of us and the institution made affirmative decisions in support of us both times. So does that answer your question? It sure does, yes. Yeah, I'm still stuck on the time too. Mm. Okay. Sorry. Thank you for listening. Angela. So being from Wichita and, and attending Wichita State, a lot of people might say that whether it's Wichita State or Kansas State, that it's a little bit easier to get into college than it is in Kansas different transition. So um, in high school, I went to a predominantly all-white Catholic school. Um, I didn't have any black teammates when I was in high school. Um, I come to Wichita State and I have 14 black teammates and two white ones. So it was a little different. Um, it was it was, it was was an amazing experience. Um, I have to echo some of what Eric said. Uh, I got told, you talk white, you dress white, um, and uh, you're, you're, you're a black Catholic, I've never heard of it before. So um, it was a learning experience for me to teach my teammates and for my teammates to teach me things as well. Um, and Eric hit it on the head, Dr. Sexton hit it on the head with, it was their experience. They never dealt with somebody who was, was a black Catholic, um, somebody who talked, how they would say proper. I mean, just, I guess not slang. I mean, it just, when he said that, it just, it hit the nail on the head. I mean, because those are some of the things. Um, but I love coming to Wichita State. I love being somebody that's from here that gets to go to their hometown school. I've got my family support. I've got my friends support. Um, I can go back to my high school and get the support of those uh, student athletes, uh, the families. Um, you know, I'm big into kids staying in their hometown and participating in sports if they can, if they're able to, because the experiences and the networking of people that I have met while I was playing has helped get, get me into the career I am in now. And it's allowed me to still be able to come back to Wichita State and work with uh, Wichita State student athletes with amazing administrative staff. I mean, you guys, Corey, Susan, I mean, you guys are just amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's been my highlight is being able to say, hey, I'm born and raised right here. I got to go play right up the street. Um, yeah. Hey, you all, track and field teams are usually one of the more racially diverse college athletic teams. Can you talk about the demographics of the track and field team when you were here and kind of the ways that help shape your college experience? Oh, um. I guess I didn't know at the time, but when in my freshman year, I'm like, hey, there's a lot of international students on our team, or athletes on our team. And it was just an eye-opening experience to, you know, we were different, but the same. You know, like we might have, you know, language barriers at some point, but um, I always go back to the, the trips, the bus trips and stuff. That's when you kind of bond and, and learn stuff. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, we had people from, I want to say Jamaica or, you know, other places like that. And, like, what, what are you guys eating? You know, and they're like, try it. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, what in the heck is that? And, you know, just just sharing those type of things, music, you know, taste. I know now, you know, athletes, you have access to every song, every movie you, you could want on your phone. Uh, back when I was in college, I was spending all night on LimeWire trying to download a CD for the road trip. They don't know what LimeWire well, is. Okay. <laughs> Gives your computer viruses in the dorm. <laughs> uh, but like you know all night i gotta get this one playlist that i'm gonna listen to all the track trip but you know just stuff like that you know okay well what are you guys watching oh that's cool so it's just kind of 
gave you experience of there, there's more to the world than, than yourself, you know, and, you know, everyone has their own struggles and, you know, you know, they share things that some people, I'm just here from, you know, my family got enough money so I can come here to you know, be the first one in college and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. I couldn't imagine downloading the, the CD on the way oh, yeah. Did you have one of the covers you would always They just brought your whole CD book in your backpack. <laughs> you were lucky. You didn't have enough, you had enough charge on your laptop or whatever you had to get you through to, I don't know, Iowa State or something. There you go. <laughs> okay, so here's some questions kind of talking about life after competing. Angela, you now work for Parks and Recreation for the city of Wichita. Actually, Angela helped put together SAC's um, SAC organized a cleanup of the park for the Earth Day last year, and Angela helped with that. So, how did you leverage your experience in education at Wichita State in finding a job that you enjoy? So, I was actually lucky. Um, I don't even know if Corey remembers this, but I ended up getting an internship uh, when I was. Um, my senior year when I was playing with uh, the Wichita Park and Rec Department. And I went and I saw that they could wear shorts, t-shirts and make good money all day and still get to do sports. Um, I was like, this is it for me. Um, it, it, it basically took the love I had of being able to create programs, work with kids, work with student athletes, um, starting as young as one to 80 years old, um, as far as, um, doing all kind of unique programming. Uh, one of the things I did when I was at Wichita State is we had to volunteer and do um, community service projects. Um, we did a lot of stuff with Special Olympics, um, catch, and I, I love that. I was like, if I get to go back and work with Wichita State athletes, maybe do something that is fun, that gets them out into the community, something that they're not dreading having to do to go, oh, we gotta go do this, volunteer, you know, and it makes such an impact. When, People see Wichita State student athletes doing stuff like that. They're like, wow, that's amazing. It's not just they're hearing the bad stuff. They're seeing all the good things that the student athletes are doing. So it kind of just fed into it when I did my internship. I mean, I just I fell in love with it. I mean, I literally love doing what I do every day. So it's been a very big blessing. And I can thank Wichita State for that. Awesome. I love to hear that, especially because I always try to encourage my student athletes to get involved in community service and all that, so this is good. You're kind of like the public service announcement for that. Thank you. Okay, so Paul, it is common for student athletes to struggle finding a new passion or a hobby once they're done competing. I know for me, I, I spent 18 years holding this one skill, and I don't run over stationary objects anymore, you know, so what am I going to do? So tell us how you were able to find new passions that you really enjoy. Yeah, um, this one I kind of struggle with. To me, I think there's three type of like former student athletes. You know, once you graduate, there's the ones that you're, you're going to go back to school. You know, get your graduate or your master's. Uh, there's the second one is I'm going to continue to try to be an athlete, and you know, or the third is just I'm lost and I don't know what to do. Um, I would say I was in between. I was lost. I don't know what to do. And two, I'm still going to be some kind of professional athlete. I don't know why in my mind I thought I was going to be able to do that. But, you know, you go, you get to that point. Um, I would just say, you know, like my transition for me, myself, was I got into barbecue. I don't know why. Um, it's just kind of that same type of passion. You know, I was a thrower for so many years, so you're spending all your time you know, mastering this video and trying to, you know, master this technique and what can I do to get better, you know. So, but my was, I wonder how they, how they get ribs like that. You know, I'm just like, and so then, you know, then it goes to, you go down a YouTube rabbit hole of finding every video and every technique and learning about every style of barbecue, and it becomes an obsession, you know, kind of like your sport, you know, hopefully it, it's kind of obsessed with I was, but it, it, it transitioned to that. So um, I'm putting in a plug here, Big D's Barbecue, one day it's coming, almost came this year, COVID, so be on the lookout. Um, it, it, it's, it's, that was my passion transition, and then that kind of, you know, kept my mental health and my mind of frame, of, you know, afloat of, you know, one day I'm going to be the best, you know, person in, in Wichita to get barbecue and no one can beat me. So it's kind of that same competitiveness and, and passion just apply. And that's anything, you know, 
if you're into you know your job and that's your thing, you know, try to be the best and you know just be competitive about it. Um, I just know like you know when we do interviews for because right my job currently is a probation officer uh, for Central County. And prior to that, I worked in a jail and in a, in a juvenile center, and they love to hire athletes, and, and I I never understood why. And I was just like, why? What, what's about an athlete? Well, they know that, you know, you're trained to get up, you know, do a sport, put, you know, your time and passion into it. And, you know, and very coachable. That's the, the main thing I would say, just, you know, we're coachable people by nature. And so I just think that all kind of transition, if you move it the right direction in a positive way that you can, you know, do that transition easily after college. But if not, you can try to be an Olympian or something. I remember when I would be in track meets, waiting for the 4 by 4 in February for the session stand and being the barbecue team. So this, 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 this yeah. happened. I would always say, I think when I first transitioned to workplace, I was like, I used to wait for my flight to start. Now I'm waiting for my lunch to warm up in the microphone. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, what a difference. Okay, Dr. Sexton, you have a lot of experience in a variety of professional fields. What is the career advice that you offer that helps you at every step of your journey? Well, Paul and Angela just mentioned it, is that the experiences that we have as student athletes uh, are invaluable. And the biggest part that I would say that we that I took away, and I, I assume they did too, is that as a student athlete, there are lots of things that as a student athlete, we don't like to do. Practices were tedious. Stu going to classes, tedious. Hard things in, in, the, in the student athlete world. But you did all of that, why? Because you wanted to play the game. You wanted to compete. You wanted to run the race. You wanted to play the golf tournament. Um, and so the big, one of the big, one career advice is understanding that in every job, there are things that are tedious and, and painful, maybe mentally painful or whatever, but you have to do those and power through them to get the good stuff, to get to do the things that you want to do, one. Number two, um, do a great job at the job that's right in front of you. Because there are so many times people have this vision and they tell you, you got to aim way out over there and you got to reach and strive and I'm not saying you don't try to do those things but if you don't do a good job again you learn that in student in, as a student athlete if you don't do a good job with the job that's right in front of you you're going to be challenged success with with your ability to be successful and third I would say do the little things with the same passion and energy as you do the big things. Because most of the time, people who are watching you are watching how you do the little things. Because how you do the little things will tell them how you will do the big things. So uh, again, most people wouldn't say those kinds of things, but I believe those are the things from my life experience that are difference makers as you go out into the, the career world. Very, very good advice. Okay, so this is the last question for everyone. What is the one thing you wish you would have implemented earlier in your college career for professional journey? I'll jump in. Um, the one thing that I wish I would have done is I wish I would have done better on a student athlete, student athlete balance. I was never very good at that. I was either good on the athlete side or I was either great on the academic side, but I could, I had challenges of getting those to sync up and it, and it made it to where I was more of a student than I was an athlete. <laughs> I 
what? No, it is okay. But if I look back, I wish I would have had been able to balance that because I might have had some neater experiences as a student athlete, but I don't think I was inhibited that way. But if I look back, that's the one thing that for me that I did not do as well at. But, but I erred on the correct side of that problem, in my opinion. I would say um, my advice would just be take advantage of your resources and your situation. Um, because, you know, when you graduate, I mean, for the last four to eight years, maybe longer, people's lives as a student athlete, you're just going back to high school, elementary, people kind of cared about what you did in sports. And, you know, once that's gone, a lot of that stuff is gone. I mean, I even joke to some of my former teammates, like, man, maybe we could just go and get a massage for free. You know, you don't have to like, you know, uh, go there like, and, like my calf sorry. hurts. You know, like I wish I could just go to a trainer's room and say, hey, my oh, calf hurts. Okay. It's free. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, back to it. and now that, and now they bill you for it. Uh, but just, <laughs> just take advantage of your, you know, the resources, you know, you know like you, your tutors and all that stuff. I mean, it might not seem like a big deal now, you know, but in the future, you know, you would have, some people would. But yes. um, and then also just you know try to put yourself out there and, and and build your you know your contacts and you know your relationships with other people in the community because you never know who you might run into, um, especially once you start looking in the workforce. You know, there's a lot of people that I run into and they're like, you look familiar, you know, because Wichita is still, you know, it's small. You know, you run into a lot of people, right. and, and and people remember you, and so you know. It's, it's good to build those relationships, and, and that's that's what we want. That would be nice. You stole mine because I was going to say network. You have you have to go. They have the boosters there all the time at different events. I would say mingle. No, no stranger because the Paul's right. You know, people will remember you and say, "Oh, you, I want, yeah, you are a student athlete." And people want to give student athletes opportunities. They want to give us jobs. They want to give you anything they can to help. you. So whenever you have to do any kind of event, anything in the community, go out and meet somebody, greet them, um, and just enjoy. Enjoy the experiences you guys have while you have them. One day you're going to look back and be like, I should have took more of advantage of that, or I should have did that or not. And treasure, treasure your um, relationships with not only your teammates, but other student athletes as well. As I mentioned, uh, some of my best friends now are still volleyball players that played here when I was here. Yes, yeah, so Mr. Abdel was saying, I definitely think that I wish I would have personally when I was competing, talked to different schools, you know, you don't even think about you have all these interactions with people from different universities, that if you were a normal student, you may not get those opportunities, but to some you're competing, like you're my competitor, I don't want to talk to you, but build those relationships, build relationships with people on campus as well, that's something I would show you guys. It's been great. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, are there any questions for our panelists that we have here? Okay, let's <laughs> answer the questions well then. Thank you for your time tonight.